The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, we talk about exactly what happened on the day. We had a nice bit of chop and a little bit of upside for a better part of the trading day. And if we really get down into about the 15, 30 minute, you can see we were holding that 395 level. I mentioned this is basically where God himself was holding the bid. You would come down, dip, bounce, bounce. I mean, literally like 10 bounces from this point. End of the day, what happens? A lot of selling. Now, every morning, Monday through Friday, I'm live around 7 a.m., 7, 10 a.m., basically till market open at 8.30. If you don't know, I am live here on YouTube. I wasn't live a little bit this past week. I was sick, I had a really bad cough, and I even didn't make a video one day just because it was just so bad. Anyways, so I'm back to normal schedule doing that again. But I told y'all to look what to look forward to today. Now, I'm gonna go into my expectations going into the beginning of this week, and just so you know, we do have a pretty big week. We have CPI on Tuesday, and we have the Fed meeting and the interest rate decision on Wednesday. So, a lot to take place, so make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I see happening going forward. But before we get into that, to ask you to consider doing two things, liking and subscribing. Every single day I'm telling you the trades I'm liking, the stocks I'm liking, and how I see us moving going forward, giving you tips, giving you tricks to go along the way also. And today, just so you know, guess what? I entered another trade. I'm going to tell you right now, I got into Amazon. Amazon puts for January. I do like this play. I was looking at downside potential plays, and Amazon just had the least amount of risk total, so that's what I'm doing right now. If you're not following on Twitter, I recommend you do so. I also notified everyone about the weakness, what's happening here. You could have got in exactly where I got in at the same time, showing you what was happening here and my logic behind it. But let's get to the chart. So as we're jumping in here, again, I, I don't want to waste your time too much. And I want to talk pretty quickly about some bullet points so you can enjoy your weekend because indeed, you need to enjoy and have some free time for yourself. It's not all about stocks unless you're me, because if you're me, you're working 24 seven to produce the best content possible and to find the best place possible for you. Leave it to me. Now, today, what happened? Morning, we had PPI data year over year and month over month, core PPI coming out. Now, the big thing here, if we look at month over month, it came out a little bit of a surprise. Your forecast was a 0.2. If we look at previously, what happened? You came out at point. 0.2, which was a nice decrease from 0.4, okay? But we had a little bit of a rise. What does this tell me? Okay, first of all, I think this puts a little bit of cloud into the whole idea of pivot, pivot, pivot ideas. Now, as far as CPI and PPI. Now, going into CPI, it's worth mentioning, we usually get CPI, then PPI, and then you know our Fed meeting. This go around, we have PPI first, then CPI. PPI is less important, so the data we got here is less important than CPI. But what I will say, if we look at the data, typically we get the CPI data, and then we'll get what happens with overall PPI, and then we'll get the information. And so usually CPI is worse overall than PPI, if that makes sense. I know we're a lot of PIs coming in here, right? But that's what I want to talk about so you can see. So this definitely put a lot of clouding in the my judgment going forward as far as being bullish into the Fed meeting, right? Now... I still think a 50 point BP hike is coming. I don't think a 75 is coming. That's just my overall opinion. And the reaction that's gonna take place from that is kind of up in the air. But what I will say about this is it could possibly be priced in. And what do I mean by that? I mean, as far as the stock market pricing in a slowdown of rate hikes, we know it's not a pivot. A pivot would be not raising rates at all. A pivot would be changing and cutting rates. We're not doing that. They're still entering their balance sheet. They're still raising rates overall so far to our knowledge. So that's what's happening. And there's no quote unquote pivot. It's just a slowdown. Now, looking at this, if we come at this and we look at CPI has a month over month rise from last month, it's not you know still on the trajectory of the downtrend. This could cloud the judgment of the Fed and kind of change their tone. We looked at the Fed tone specifically with Powell from his last meeting and it was pretty favorable. I mean, honestly, I wanted to be sitting at the same dinner table as a guy for the first time in a while. So CPI, I def definitely think keep your head on a swivel. I do think we have a little bit of maybe selling going on Monday morning because we're going to wake up Tuesday morning, 730 central is when you get that overall data release on CPI. So the market's probably going to be, you know, taking it slow, taking it with ease, not rushing in into any positions unless they get some insider info. So Going back to SPY, what are we looking at? Now, when we look at where we are at, if you're below 395, obviously you're bearish down to 390, this 390, 391 area. 
And if we look over the past month, that's what this represents right here. So here, all the way here, this is your past month of trading. I just want to highlight something for you. This whole little block, right? Look at what's happening here and go to trading view so you can get a better little look so I can make a little box for you. Go to the four hour time frame. We're going to get rid of every other indicator just to make it really seamless for us to look at. And I talked about this yesterday. Look at how you're trading. Basically, going back to November 10th, you know, right now is December 9th, 31 to 30 days. Boom. You're at the same place, people. What does that mean? It just means you've been trading in a range. This is not time to go long. There's no confirmation to the downside. You're just range trading. The last time we had range trading along these lines, and again, you have a little bit of, you know, made higher highs here than push back down. But the last time you really had something like this go on, again, you had to go all the way back here to lucky old May. You remember what happened in May? It was bad, okay? It was bad, okay? Very big dip going on there. If you were in Discord, you were happy because we made money on those shorts. But look in here, I'm just saying, if we start to lose this 390 area on SPY, and if we start to lose the 3, I believe, or 280 level on Qs, it's bad if we lose this 280, 279 level. There's no support here on Qs, at least until 272, and arguably down towards 266, right? It's just complete illiquid area. So you got to hold this area of support going into, you know, Tuesday minimum, right? You got to. So this is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm watching pretty vigilantly when it comes to what's happening here. I'm not making a heavy decision on going really heavy on shorts, really heavy on calls or anything like that. I'm trying to just sit on my hand and wait for what's going to happen here. Now, again, I use a lot of past examples here on the channel to give you an insight of what to expect. And Every time I've said this, I believe I haven't really steered you wrong. But when you've come here, what have I said when you're leading into a very big influential decision time in the market? I said, sit on your hands and be patient. It's not financial advice. It's common sense, people. That's what it is. And if we look here, you're still in this range. Unless you really break below 280, there's no real reason to get overly bearish. And same with 290 on SPY, right? Or overly bullish unless you can get above 295 on Qs and around 410 on SPY. Now... We're just sitting back and forth, and I'm telling you, if you're patient and you just wait, the trades are going to come to you. Again, off the top of my head, and you might get a little bit of annoyed thinking about some of the you know, repeats I mentioned here, but I do it because it proves the point. When we look at Starbucks, we look at Boeing, we look at, you know, um, let's talk about Tesla, some some of our really big plays, Home Depot. We had some really good, good plays. The only play that really didn't play out recently is the NVIDIA trade, and I posted a $700 loss we had there, pretty minuscule, but we still lost, right? And we, we forced it a little bit there. But if we look at what's taking place when we take our time and we let the decision get made, we let the market decide the way the trend is going to move, and then we follow that trend... Nine out of 10 times, people, we're succeeding here on the channel. It's only really success stories. And that's not because of me. That's because you're being patient and you're having a game plan. So this is the game plan for me. And I'm just going to tell you. Right now, going into Monday, I anticipate a little bit more selling. So that's why I have my Amazons. But I'm not going to ride that whole position through CPI and you know the Fed meeting. That's crazy. My plan is to just be patient through CPI. Maybe trade a little bit of the reaction from that. Get a little bit of day trade. But really wait to make my swings, really wait before I make any big trades or big decisions until Wednesday of next week. Why? Because the Fed is going to dictate the way we move forward with their tone and their sense of the market right now. What do we know so far? What is big money telling us? Well, if we look at the, the, the European money and arguably the biased banks out there, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, they're telling us you need to be bullish. You're going to new highs. Growth is going to come back. You know, there's no recession. But if we look at the big money that has been reliable over the past year, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, they're telling us they expect 52-week lows to be tested here in quarter number one of this year. They're telling us a dip is probably coming. They're telling us we won't have growth for the first three quarters of the year next year, right? That's bearish news, right? So we need to see what the Fed says about what's happening with growth, what's happening with inflation, what's happening with unemployment, and where the market's going to go. So this is what I'm doing. I'm sitting on my hands. I'm waiting around here. I'm going to be patient with my swings. Day trades, obviously, I'll trade the trend for the day and how we're moving and give you those updates. And I'll have an update coming on Sunday and Monday, Monday also. But be patient on the big money trades, people. 
That's what I have to say here. Because right now is a time that, yes, you could be right on the right side of whatever, you know, PAL says or CPI, you know, prints. But let me tell you, if you're on the wrong side, you're losing all of it. You're, you're going to lose it all. When we come here and we step up to the plate to trade every day, it's not about gambling, people. It's about getting the most bang for our buck. It's about having the least amount of risk while offering the most amount of reward. That's the name of the game here. You don't come here to get your crystal ball read and tell you your future. And some people do. I will say that they do come here for that. But when you come here, if you listen and you do the work, I'm telling you right now, you're going to make your money. Again, this is not planned or anything like that. But going to Twitter, this is just constant happening 24-7 of what's happening here, right? I just want to just say what's happening. People, you know, this guy called it, yada, 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 right? It's not about me saying called it this or that. It's about trying to help you guys as much as possible, right? They're paying attention to the charts, right? Just made another 406 tr first call ever trading something from the stock yesterday, right? It's not about me giving you financial advice. It's about me helping you draw a plan, figure out your direction here in this market, taking it slow, but also trying to find the best opportunities for yourself. That's what it's about here. So let's go over some stocks and things I'm looking at specifically. First up, VIX. I want to talk about VIX specifically here. Now, when we look at VIX, you're still bouncing out of this area. You're still pushing up. There's been no real downturn here on VIX. VIX still looks like it wants to continue up. This is bearish in my opinion. This is one of the healthy indicators here. DXY, a lot of people are talking about this. They keep saying DXY looks terrible, head and shoulders. Well, guess what, boys and girls? Even though DXY is pushing down, what's happening? Stocks are still weak. Okay, again, what did I tell you about this? I told you when you broke below the 109 level, there was a little bit less significance of what's happening with the dollar. And we also have stuff happening with the, the petrodollar based on what's happening in China and the new deal they have with uh, the sods. Okay, so that's a big thing to happening right now. Now, I will say the dollar looks like it wants to break out of this trend back to the upside. And if that does, that would definitely fuel the fire, but it's less impactful down here than when the dollar is higher above 109. When the dollar is higher above 109, it has more direct impact on the market. When the dollar is cheaper, it has less direct impact. So you might see a quick bounce to the upside, but that does not necessarily mean stocks can't go up, right? I do want to say that when it's up higher, this is when it's very much impacting the direction of the market instantaneously. When it's down here, it's less relevant, less important. TLT bonds. This is one of the biggest things here. When you look at the strength of the economy, okay? So when we look at the economy basically since, you know, 2021, the peak, TLT bonds have been getting destroyed. 20 year bonds. It's one of the best ways to look at the health of the economy. You had a local breakup, and everyone was saying TLT bonds are breaking up. They're doing this, they're doing that. I told you, be careful of a false breakout. Even with the upside that you've seen on the past day, day and a half, guess what? TLT is going down. It is dropping back down, and it was dropping all day long, which was a clear indicator that this move up was a little bit fake. Now, going into yield, the US versus the 10 year versus the 30 year, my favorite inversion, one of the best inversion charts to look at. Guess what? You're fully inverted again. What does that mean? The 10 year is officially back over the 30 year. Okay, this is concerning. You're still holding that overall trend, the higher low trend for the past two years here. Guess what? Yields inverted, still bad news bears. This is also makes me believe the dollar will start getting a little bit of a bump up too, if you will. This is just my opinion, and the writing is still on the walls, but I think TLT is probably your best bet to look at here because it gives you an overall view of strength on the market. Looking at J&K junk bonds, you're actually still holding up really well here, but I'd be prepared and watching to see if it gets back below this previous 52-week lows at $89 to $90. One of the least important things here, I will say, TLT is going to be your best friend to watch because this immediate drop here was disgusting and it tells me a lot about what's happening here on the market. Now, some key bullet points to be watching and stocks that I'm liking a lot now. One, I'm going to tell you right now, Amazon, favorite play right now, love it. When I'm looking at downside potential, let's talk about why. First of all, I'm going to talk about the 102 level. Double top tier came again rejected there. This is your previous 2018 and 19 high. Guess what? You're rejecting there. You cannot make higher highs either. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. 
Still on this downtrend, arguably making a descending triangle to push down and find new 52-week lows. Your clear demand here is around 86.5. If I take you out a little bit deeper, and I like to take you out a little bit further so you can see these massive levels of my target, my low estimation here is going to be around $81, $80 roughly on Amazon. So I still, still think there's about $10 of potential downside here, and Amazon's definitely not finding buyers in the market. And then if we also take a quick look, what and TrendSpot, I love this. It's their new tool. You can actually see some order flow happening here on the book. Just for February and January, massive put orders coming in. Massive, 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 massive puts compared to calls. A lot of bears are placing their money here. Insider selling also taking place. Everything telling me downside here personally. But again, this is why I'm trading it because it's a very weak stock in the market. I always say this. If you're looking at the market and you, there's a little bit of indecision in your head for it and you're trading the downside, find something that's really, really weak. And I think Amazon is that guy. Now, when we look at Tesla, I told you yesterday, what did I say about Tesla? I said it's upside to 181.5 roughly. You came right up to this level, came up to actually 182.5 roughly. And then you came back down, got back below 181.5 and pushing back down, right? at the target now i want to see the reaction we get early next week but if we start to flip below 177 i'm targeting back down to 173 172.5 roughly if we break back below the 177 level that's what i'd be watching specifically there next up Walmart, this is probably one of the best plays that we had overall. Again, I notified y'all on Twitter. I, I Again, I try to give it a lot of my plays are also on Twitter. They're on YouTube. If I'm not even, all the plays I mentioned in Discord, I try to give you for free also. I just handhold in Discord and there's a lot of community stuff going on there. I told you on December 5th, top heavy, looking like to come down. Guess what happened? Nothing but downside here. All the way down to 145 from roughly 151. <laughs> Congratulations, the road continues. We're still seeing a lot of blood here. Now going forward, some big stocks I wanna watch for. Microsoft, you had a triple top up here at about 256. If you start to break this higher low trend here, I do believe you're gonna start working towards your lows all the way down here. Let's go to the four hour chart so you can see a little bit more clearly. Down here roughly to 240. But you wanna see if you're gonna break these higher lows you are currently forming on the four hour chart. You break out of this, again, I am targeting downside potential here. Going into Apple, I know, we're running through a lot here. You're trying to make these higher lows here, but if you break back below the 141 level and flip it, I think you're coming down to 138 roughly. That's my key target. Now also too, we're looking at some big time frames here. I wanna be really clear. Apple, what are we looking for? We've been talking about it. The bottom of this weekly higher low trend, you're inching closer to it. We've been calling for it. So 138 has been the signal, what we've been looking for. So we want to see that. You can see you're making lower highs here continuously. So you do like what you're saying. It looks bearish. And again, if this breaks down, we anticipate Spy to show a lot of blood. Now, again, I'm going to have a deeper viewpoint going on Sunday. Sundays are my longer term videos, about two to three months. But again, if we look here at the daily at what's happening, clear rising wedge breaking out and an arguable, arguable bear flag in the daily is almost an inverted hammer. Absolutely disgusting. Looks terrible. But I want to say this. Don't just make up your mind based on technicals. You got to wait for the fundamentals of CPI and what's happening with the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Stay prepared. Keep your head on a swivel. I'll see you on Sunday. Have a good weekend, traders.